Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I have come to see Deborah Schnabley Morell at her home studio here in London. Deborah, how are you doing? Okay, very good, thanks Zed. Yeah. So, I'm visiting Deborah today to record a short series of videos. In this particular video, what we're going to be looking at is a bit of a geek mode video, because what we're going to be looking at is different pens and pencils for drawing and writing on green wood. Now, if you're not familiar already, I have filmed with Deborah previously on different occasions. We filmed a very detailed video on her process for carving an eating spoon, her entire process for carving a pocket spoon. Uh, we looked at other videos as well on decoration and so forth. They've all proved to be very popular videos. Um, if you're not familiar also, Deborah has a very extensive and long background in art and design. She's published many books. She's taught you know, across the country. <coughs> so she's very au fait with all the different aspects of art and design. So what we're gonna be doing in this particular video, we're gonna be honing in on the variety of myriad of pens and pencils you can use for drawing on green wood whether you're a green woodworker a spoon carver a bushcrafter whatever your discipline is if you're going to be marking out green wood in any shape or form then obviously at the end of the day you can use whatever you've got to hand but as I've spent more time with Deborah I've come to realize actually there are some kind of pros and cons shall we say yeah I'm sure there's a better terminology for it but it's kind of different uh, things you can use for drawing on green wood, but there are some more optimal things that you can use for uh, marking out on green wood. So with Deborah's kind permission, I've come down to see her today to film this very video that you're watching. What I'm gonna do, a couple of quick things before we get into the actual meat and bones of the video, is down below in the description, I will put links to all the previous videos and other videos that i filmed with Deborah. Highly recommend you check those out to kind of see all the things that we cover in those respective tutorials. And secondly, I will put a link below to both Deborah's website and her Instagram. Highly recommend you go check that out. Give her a follow on Instagram and you can see the myriad of work that she gets up to. So Deborah, with your kind permission, shall we get started? Let's get started. So guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video where Deborah Schlebley Morell is going to be talking about the different pens and pencils for drawing on green wood. So Deborah, as I've kind of mentioned in the introduction to this video, um, you've got quite a long career and background in art and design. So for those who may not be familiar and in the context of what we're going to be discussing in this video, would you like to just touch on your background a little bit more? Um, well, I had a very good art education at school with a fantastic art teacher. Um, and then I went to art school and did a fine art training. Um, and I spent most of my money probably on art materials during my life. When I was a teenager, my parents used to give me some money and guess they'd go and buy a nice dress or some shoes or something and I'd always come back with paintbrushes and pencils <laughs> and they were incredibly disappointed. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm still like that actually. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd, you know, seek out... It's a bit of a long time since I've been doing anything with um, my own work uh, apart from spoons and I, I thought I'd sort of try and find out what materials would be really good to use to draw on wood and um, you know I've got quite a long history of writing about craft and craft projects and so over the years I think I've probably used an awful lot of different materials and I've worked out what's what's good and so I could select something that I think was particularly good for working on green wood. But in terms of stating the obvious, you know, an average person is probably looking at this video and thinking, well, you just use whatever you've got to hand. Well, actually, that's pretty good advice, really. And I, I was just saying to you before, I've actually uh, drawn a, um, a spoon onto a, a blank with a burnt stick because I didn't have a pencil with me. I was at the allotment and we had the stove on for boiling the kettle and so I just put a stick in and, and blacked the end and funnily enough it's one of the projects I used to do with children when I was teaching children they would burn a stick and then they would draw holding one end of the stick and you get this incredible freedom beautiful line so I did that it was very good perfect because you're weird this video actually came about the genesis is on a previous visit I came down to see you for filming um, I even asked you 
kind of what's an ideal pencil to use uh, and then all of a sudden I think we must have spoke for about half an hour <laughs> when you started pulling out this myriad of pencils and all of a sudden I realized oh my gosh as a layman there's like this big deep rabbit hole you know of pencils and whatnot so on it, it, one end of the spectrum it could seem very obvious well look, a pencil is a pencil a pen's a pen on the other side of the spectrum, I guess you could write like a PhD thesis, you know. Or well, look, you know, I am not the expert on pencils. I, I go into art shops and I just think, oh, God, I wish I knew more. There's just like aisles and aisles of pencils. And, I, you know, I've just sought out the ones that I think would do. So I haven't got a big selection here. But, um, yeah, it's a big subject, said. <laughs> <laughs> so to kind of start off then... Um, Obviously, the goal with this video is to talk about the different options people have and your experiences with them. Um, once again, it's all predicated on the fact that people just use whatever it is they've got to hand. But in this video, um, I want to give you full permission to go geek mode um, and <laughs> talking about these things. So what particular kind of pen or pencil would you like to start well, off with Well, I think I'm going to start off with my preferred one, really, which is, I've got a few examples. One, two, three... I think those are now these are graphite <clears throat> which are water sensitive so if you get if you would put um, this is my tea but it doesn't matter put it in there and draw it on a on something you get a, a when it's wet you get a very nice strong wet line which you don't get with a it's somehow soluble um, now, when you think that you're drawing on wet wood, um, the moisture in the wood is going to re react with the pencil. And what I want to do when I'm using a pencil is I want to get a strong line. I want to know where the axe has got to go. I don't want to have a fluffy, faint line because that's not safe and it's also not going to give me any guidance. So I would use... This is not a particularly wet piece of wood, actually, but it still makes a very nice strong line like that so if it's a dry piece of wood you can actually you can just wet the tip and you get this lovely strong line but you have to be confident enough to do us to make a strong line now this is a derwent sketching pencil called light wash it says hb which is a medium hard pencil um, but it's brilliant uh, they do wear out quite quickly because they're they there's somehow the, the water solubleness of them makes them wear down quicker. So I've got other versions of that. That's the most common one. <clears throat> but I went to a very wonderful shop recently and these are, I don't know what make they are, <clears throat> but they're both, um, aquarelle is, is um, watercolour. They are both soluble, so either of them will do. Um, I don't necessarily drip, dip it in, but because it's dry wood, I'll, I'll draw a line with it not dipped in. Well, that's good enough for me, actually. That's a really lovely, strong line. And the same, this, this one's got wood on it. It's a, a um, graphite in wood. This is just solid graphite, which is also water-soluble. So not such a strong line, but if you, if you wet it, it's really good. You know, it's good for doing curves and not very good curves. Sorry about that. So what's really important is the quality of the line for me. It's got to be, it's got to be a bold statement. I don't want any kind of fluffy lines. Um, now, sometimes I don't, I've run out of those pencils. Or I haven't got any and I will use a Sharpie, but I don't, tend to use it on wood that have taken out of a tank of water because it just ruins the sharpie but this is a this is a good this is a good strong line i mean they're very they're common and they're cheap and you can actually sometimes it's nice to draw with a color so with this one obviously you've got to be very certain about well, with, if, yeah, you have to be a little bit more certain with these, but of course, with any, it's it's like with anything on pencil, you'd use a rubber or oh, you you'd have to accept this as a permanent marker. But of course, you can take it off if you've made a mistake. I mean, I tend not to take it off if I've made a mistake. I just draw over it, and I might I might do a line. For instance, I do a line 
you know, in this, I do a spoon like that, and then I think, oh no, I'm not quite sure. So I might do, to try and correct it if I use a felt tip, if I haven't got my graphite pencils, I'll draw over it with another colour so that I know kind of exactly where I'm going. So that's one, that's one thing. And then obviously children's felt tips, <clears throat> that it's just the same as this, they're, they're, they're good. There's something really nice about those lines. You should really aim, I think, when you're using any drawing instrument to be, to make a confident line. You could practice just making confident lines, really, or confident curves that sort of thing really helps because you are drawing straight lines and you're drawing curves um, you know like the small the small curves like that sort of thing I've heard some people um, suggest not to use things like sharpies or felt-tip pens because the marking um, well a couple of things number one is the the, the mark itself will go onto the tools um, and the second thing, the reason why they suggest maybe not to use that is because obviously it will stain the wood. Um, oh, but it, doesn't, it doesn't really go far into the wood. Um, and anyway, when you're drawing on a blank, you know, the, you're going to take a lot more of the wood off. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's not my preferred, it's not my preferred thing, but they're perfectly good. I mean, the other thing is if you haven't got anything else, a biro is a really good tool. It just makes a good strong line. You can go over it a few times. You know. There's also the I do lots of doodling with biros. I really love. But there's also the thickness issue as well, isn't there? With one's thinner, one's thicker. Yeah, I mean that would be a thinner one. I I don't really mind about whether it's thin or thick. I mean that's about the right line for me. That one with the graphite pencil. Sometimes the children's colouring crayon. Well, this isn't a children's colouring crayon, but it's, it's a very good one. I can't find all my others, unfortunately. Um, these are lovely to draw with. They're like the graphite pencils. They're not, they're not water-soluble. You can get water-soluble versions of, the, um, of these. And there's something quite nice about, a, you know, blanks. You've got a kind of row of blanks that you've drawn your spoon on, and they're different colours, or they're all one colour, or something like that. So I'm quite fond of this, um, but my favourite one is obviously, there's just three versions of that here and um, I just, I just, they just flow better, something lovely about graphite, we, you know we used to call it lead and we thought it was lead, I don't know why it was called lead, I mean it's probably always been graphite, but um, yeah. And then you've got your standard pencils haven't you, like you've got over oh, yeah. here. So these two, these are just ordinary HB pencils. <clears throat> so sometimes if I'm working on something and I've got to a certain stage and I'm maybe carving in front of the fire or something or sitting up watching the telly <clears throat> um, and I want to do, make very small adjustments. So if I want to come in here, I'll use a pencil like this because it's a very s narrow line. I won't use the big graphite ones because you can't really see so well. So if I want to do something like that, I draw it in like that with this kind of ordinary pencil. I think, it, I think I'd say pencils are best really. This is an HB. Don't go harder than an HB and don't go softer than a, say, 2B, I think, for that kind of work. So that's very, very faint but it still tells you what to do and, and at this stage you're using a knife so you've got to match somehow the fineness of your line with the fineness of the knife you know you're just coming in you're just coming in here like that really so just for my own understanding things like HB and 2B or whatnot that references the HB is a middle hard pencil well soft hard it's right in the middle if it goes um, then 1H, 2H, that goes to the hard range, and they're not, they would be used by technical drawing draftsmen, but the, and then going the other way, the softer is HB, 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, and it goes right up until they're very, very soft. <coughs> uh, don't get a very, very soft pencil. So I would have a combination of an HB, maybe a 2B or something, and then these, these um, watercolour pencils. 
I think those are the best. Because last time we met up, you recommended, was it the Faber Castell? Was it a Faber Castell one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, that's probably what I was using then. This is a Derwent one, and this one, Progress Progresso Aquarelle. That's one art graph. This is just a lot of different makes. I ha happened to go to this shop, best shop in London, and um, Cornelison's, and they didn't have any Derwent pencils. They've got like very esoteric aquarelle pencil, uh, watercolour pencils, graphite, and so I just got those. They're only about one pound ninety-nine each. It's not, not much, is it, for a spoon baker's tool? <laughs> <laughs> it's, in terms of pencils, and this I'm asking as a layman, right? You know, you walk into your typical pound shop or dollar store, your equivalent, and you can see, for example, the watercolour pencils there. You know, so little packs and sets. Are they any good? Or What do you mean watercolour pencils in a pound shop? That sounds interesting. I better get down there. <laughs> <laughs> but for example, you know what I mean? You walk into your bog standard shop, there's probably some cheap little set or something. Um, so I can only assume that there's different grades. There's obviously well, I think if you want to have the kind of ultimate, uh, get one of these and get them online. You just put in watercolor, uh, graphite, watercolor graphite or water soluble graphite pencil, art pencil, and then they'll come up online and uh, get a few of these. And they'll last, you know, get three or four, that'll last you quite a while. The only trouble with pencils, graphite pencils, if you drop them, they can crack the pencil inside the wood and then you get to a point where you're sharpening and the, and the whole thing comes out. We used to call it the lead, comes out. So you do need to be a bit careful with pencils. I have a special little <clears throat> case in my basket where the pencils all go. So, so that means we have to buy another item now. What, you mean a special little case? A little case. Well, I don't I... use a pencil case. <laughs> I just, it's just a nice little cloth thing that I put my burnishers in and uh, my, oh, I don't know, bits and pieces, rulers, flexible rulers. <clears throat> so that's an interesting thing to note then, just to kind of wrap up, that even a pencil itself, you need to be a little bit careful how you store it, how you transport it. Yeah, just don't, if it's a graphite pencil, don't drop it too often. Well, don't drop it at all if you can help. Biros doesn't matter, does it? Sharpies, it doesn't matter. Felt tips, it doesn't matter. But these, it really does matter. <clears throat> everybody sharpened, even the coloured crayons, everybody sharpened them and then realised that the, pen, the, the lead is loose and it pops out. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Deborah, thank you so much. My pleasure as always, said. It's always nice to dive into geek mode for, yes. a, particular, <laughs> for a particular video. Like I said, this is summer. You know, most of us, including myself, will look over. But I thought during my visit down to see Deborah and with her kind permission, it would be a great opportunity to do a dedicated video on this topic. Because I feel personally, uh, in the spoon carving and green woodworking community and even in the bushcraft community, um, it's not really a topic that's hugely discussed. It's kind of like, well, just grab a pencil and, yeah, and grab a pen. First. It's a video first. Yeah, it's a video first. That's it. <laughs> well, we're breaking ground here, Deborah. We that's, that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. But like I said, it says, I know, a bit of a geek video, but it was just a great opportunity to discuss the different things. Ultimately, the conclusion is use whatever you've got to hand. It's as simple as that. However, there are some preferred you know, pens or pens that you should, and, and ideally you should be using. I know that the moment I switched to the, the water pencil that you recommended last time, it was day and night <laughs> between that and a normal pencil. Yeah. Uh, but the yeah. normal pencil, I found you really had to kind of go at it in order to see um, what it was you, you were drawing. Yeah. But the moment I used the, the Faber-Castell, um, pencil, which I've been pronouncing wrong up until now. I've only just realised. Faber-Castell, but Faber -Castell. Doesn't really, I might be pronouncing it wrong. I don't know. Really. But, but, but your, your husband's Swiss, so you probably got more of a chance of pronouncing it correctly than I have. Oh, yeah. It's Swiss, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's it. You need to check with your yeah. husband. That's it. He's not brilliant on pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> you spent too long in I'll London. I'll, che I'll check with a relative. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, I use it, it was just day and night difference. Once again, a little bit more dearer, but not a huge amount. I think I spent, literally, it was, it was a pound 
for the yeah. pencil and I've just bought, I think it was a pack of three. Um, and yeah, it'll last you ages, you know, uh, yeah. uh, those pencils. But yeah, it's a little bit of an opportunity in this video to kind of dive deep into this particular subject. But obviously the conclusion is use what you've got. However, there are a couple of optimal pencils. Make sure you... it makes a good line. I think that's the, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, and also one thing we realized just off camera as we just kind of draw into this last scene is I think what we'll do with your kind permission, Deborah, is just below this video, if we just maybe write a few names of pencils. Yeah, absolutely fine, uh, yeah. With the things, just in yeah. case obviously you want to go out. You can buy them from, from so many places now, online and offline. Um, yeah. Look in terms of your locality, your country and so forth. Um, but yeah, I think as a, just a general guide, um, we'll put some names down below in the description of some brands and certain types of pencils. And yeah, just go out and do your search. Yeah. Um, as we touched on at the very beginning, this is a very, very deep rabbit hole. Um, I remember just to kind of wrap up of, <laughs> is um, when I posted a picture of the pencils that I got based on your recommendation, I posted it on a Facebook group, uh, a spoon carving Greenwood working group and the thread just exploded. Oh, did it? Yeah, because, oh, and it, 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 in a positive way. Oh, right. Um, and it was a German gentleman who, I'm gonna apologize in advance, you know, if I don't remember your name. Um, and he was actually an architect, based oh, right. in Germany. Yeah. Um, and he gave me like a dissertation on Faber-Castell and all oh, the different myriad brilliant. of pencils. And he, he was very kind enough to give me some links to check out this specific pencil, that specific pencil. Um, so yeah, it can go very, very deep. Um, and actually, I found out in the process that uh, a lot of the Faber-Castell pencils and whatnot, um, some of them you couldn't even get in the UK. You could only order. Probably, yeah. Uh, um, from yeah. kind of German outlets and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the, the, the rabbit hole goes very, very, very deep. Um, I walked into an art shop once and it was just as far as the eye can see, it was pencils. <laughs> well, I mean, I also find it really alarming going into a art, big art shop and seeing the kind of aisles of pencils. I mean, I love it, but I just think, God, I just don't know enough. You yeah. Know, really difficult. A lot of wallets get harmed in the process of going to an art shop. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> God, yeah. That's it. You're gonna give a yeah. crime reference number to your wallet. Um, but yeah, like I said, guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this short video to kind of dive deep into this particular facet of green woodworking, spoon carving, bushcraft, etc. And we hope you found it useful. So last but not least, a quick reminder, I'm gonna put links below to all the previous videos I've done with Deborah, as well as the ones we're filming on this visit down. Highly recommend you check those out if you haven't done so already. I will also put a link below to Deborah's website. You can go check out the work that she does. And last but not least, I will put a link below to Deborah's Instagram. If you gain any value from this video whatsoever, it will mean the world to me. You go check her out on Instagram, give her her follow, uh, and you can see a, a, a catalog of work that she gets up to. She's a prolific craftswoman, um, one of my favorite makers, Oh, you know, and I really do mean that. I'm honoured. Um, and so, yeah, it's really great to see the kind of myriad of work that she gets up to. And last but not least, I'll put um, a few names below of the uh, pencils and so forth that Deborah has referenced for you to go check out and just use it as a starting point. This video is not the be all and end all. Like I said, the rabbit hole goes deep and everyone's got their own preferences. But hopefully, for those of you who like me, who are a bit of a Luddite when it comes to this subject, it gives you a bit of a grounding to realize actually there are a few options out there and each of them kind of have their pros and cons. So Deborah, yeah. I do appreciate uh, you taking the time once again and allowing me to record this video. Yeah, it was great fun. Guys, as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. For myself, Zed Outdoors, and Deborah Schnabley-Morell, peace out. Peace out.